I went to go see the Men in Black International yesterday. No. Yeah. Gotta do that. Hey, guess what? It's been 22 years since Men in Black. Oof. How's it aged? Everyone, everyone involved in Men in Black is dead now. <laughs> but anyway, the point is I go to see it at the big screen in um, the O2. The screen I think we went and saw Assassin's Creed at all those years ago. Oh, uh, yeah. And, like, the whole place is empty and it's huge. It's, like, 500 seats in there. It's really big. And there was two people in there and i come in and i've pre-booked my seat and i've gone i've done something a bit unusual i haven't stuck to my stay at the front rule and i've booked halfway back so i think what are the odds what are the fucking odds that this pair have sat anywhere near me and so i go and i find my row it's the row directly in front of them okay great okay just not not directly in front of them the cinema's empty come on merciful (laughs) cinema god i start walking along the row And before I get to it, I know that my seat is the one directly in front of the guy and that he has put his coat over the seat. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck me. So obviously I walk straight past and sit in someone else's seat and just hope that this incredibly empty cinema doesn't suddenly fill up and I have to have an awkward interaction. Because I don't know if it's different in Australia, but the way it works in England is that if you're sat in someone's seat, You'll just be aware of some kerfuffle at the end of the row and some, like, passive-aggressive snorting. And then two people will just leave the cinema very angry. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> no confrontation, just, um, fuck you, cunt. And then they just leave. Usually wait until the film started. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. There, there's something similar happened to John Wick last week, which was that I went and sat in an empty row and some guy comes and sits right next to me, having booked that seat. Now, is it good etiquette for me to just get up move over a seat and sit down again or is that weird i do that all the time i don't like being around yeah (laughs) i I just want both armrests is that (laughs) and i can have them i'm not being greedy this place is fucking empty all you have to say paul is i'm sorry that you were offended (laughs) and everything will be okay Son of a not favourite son. I think he was compensating with us. Trying to do better than the old man did, you know? That's fair. I'm Paul Salt. I'm doing Egypt a favour. <laughs> and today we are, jo- we are joined by Daniel Wilkes. Hello. Founder of the A Lot of Green Network. That's a lot of network. Tell us about yourself and your network, Mr. Wilkes. Oh, God. Now you put me on the spot. You didn't warn me that I was going <laughs> to do this. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What is this thing? Give us the elevator pitch. Uh, the, the elevator pitch is that for 20 years I've been a print journalist. And mm. basically I've taken the I've taken a different approach to a podcast network. Instead of going for the big shows you know, that everyone listens to, I'm more interested in working with the smaller shows, giving them the listenership they deserve, and they have a loyal audience. We sure do. Yeah, well, you're better. Absolutely. Our beloved OG team. Yeah. They're out there now in the darkness. The OG team got us here. <laughs> Daniel has all your details. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much for all of your support. And we're very b- proud to be part of the network. The A Lot of Green Network. Oh, happy to have you. Good stuff. No, yeah. I do have a bone to pick with you. Uh-oh. We're doing Gods of Egypt today, but I didn't get to do a Neil Breen film. Ah, oh, the shame of it. Uh, and there were so many I others. I oh, four others. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I can't say no to another Neil Breen. I can't say Breen to a Breen, so <laughs> you next can't time say... you're on. Yeah, I'll see if I can get a hold of his new one, whatever that... Uh, uh, oh, Twisted, twisted Pear, right? Yeah, Twisted, twisted Pear. Sister. Which I'm pretty sure is just a film about Neil Breen sitting on his balls. Oh, God. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised so by how ways. epic it would be. <laughs> <laughs> a musical well... that happens solely inside of his testicles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Well, you're not getting a Neil a Breen dream this week because you have challenged us with a jog through the underworld. Oh, We're going to watch all 127 minutes of Gods of Egypt. Set has taken over Egypt and enslaved its people. Only one god can save us. 
but not without his eyes. Steal from a god. Only a madman would try such a thing. Where do you suppose we could find someone so mad? Written by that partnership that brought you such fantasy epics as Dracula Untold, The Last Witch Hunter, The Power Rangers Remake, The Lost in Space Netflix Show. That is all of their credits. They're a powerhouse team. <laughs> I don't know how you can argue against them. Move aside Lord and Miller. <laughs> yes, director Alex Proyas listed some of the many influences for the film. He says he was inspired by The Guns of the Navarone. Oh, I love that movie. Such a great sort of old British war movie. Just total airfix model box cover action adventure. But with quite a lot of heart, too. Uh, Lawrence of Arabia. Ah, oh, such a great epic. Just the best. David Lean at the height of his powers. Peter O'Toole, compelling. Fantastic. The Man Who Would Be King. Oh, w wonderful. I actually saw that recently. I saw a John Huston documentary and decided to check it out. It's got um, Sean Connery and Michael Caine. They go out into the desert together and get mistaken for gods. It's what well, well, Connery does. It's really cool. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Brilliant. It's great Spielberg. And Sergio Leone's Westerns. Fantastic. Just pure cinema. God, I bet this is going to be great. No. From the first incomprehensible shot, you can see, you know, those influences writ large. <laughs> All those influences happening at the exact same time <laughs> over the when top Gregory of Gregory Peck gets killed by Peter O'Toole. <laughs> well, we couldn't get Peter O'Toole, so we got Brian Brown instead. <laughs> and Jamie Lannister as Sean Connery. <laughs> the film was received while well, we're covering it, so bad. Uh, Peter Bradshaw at The Guardian said it's initially fueled with its own absurdity, like an ecologically unsafe type of diesel. <laughs> but there is a falling off after half an hour or so. <laughs> that's... <laughs> that's... That's reaching. I love it. I think it's great. Are you saying that half an hour is too generous? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that that uh, analogy is a bit of a... What's the word? Contrived as, as fuck? As this... <laughs> it's as good as this analogy. This wasn't an analogy. It was. It was just, it was, it was just, it was just as contrived as. It was, good, it was begging for an analogy, but none came. Just, it was just a That's description. Peter Bradshaw steps No in. analogies here. It's just it's description heavy. <laughs> no joke podcast. I love it. Thank you, Mr. Bradshaw. For gods of Egypt. Um, but Jordan Hoffman at The Guardian said... This is ridiculous. This is offensive. This shouldn't be. And I'm not going to say otherwise if you can't bring yourself to buy a ticket for this movie. But if you are on the fence, you can always offset your karmic footprint with a donation to a charity. Because this movie was a tremendous amount of fun. What? I have whiplash from that review. That, fuck that guy. <laughs> no, honestly, that's kind of how I feel about this movie. Is like It's terrible. Every decision is the wrong <laughs> one. But... I kind of love it for that because it's one man's crazy vision of something he thinks is good. <laughs> Egyptian mythology. <laughs> After all the vitriol, Alex Proyas, possibly hurt creatively, but more likely a feared for his box office, uh, took to Facebook. Basically, he slagged off everyone. And he said, I applaud any film goer who values their own opinion enough to not base it on what the pack mentality says is good or bad. And he called film critics a bunch of vultures, yeah. which Mark Kermode is very keen to point out. If film critics are vultures, it makes his film dead meat. Yeah, it kind of set himself up He loves up that, that one. He's told that one about f 17 times. <laughs> loves it. It's the only time it's worked, though. <laughs> yeah, he says it always about different reviews, and it's always <laughs> baffling. When U Uwe Boll said he was going to smash his face in, he went, well, that makes your film rotting meat. <laughs> Stop spitting on me. Mark Kerr mode. One of the filmgoers who values their own opinion enough not to base it on the pack mentality says... <laughs> is <laughs> fuck me sorry my god that note was bad okay <laughs> is Sigorica Gosh on uh -huh. Google who says the movie was very much watchable until the end and I admit I liked it if you love fantasy and great animation then this is a must watch I don't understand people trying to find reason with a fictional film it is not relatable to real life hence it is fictional <laughs> <laughs> take that reason QED bitches <laughs> Sick of experts. <laughs> we're ready for we're ready for fiction. We're ready for Boris. <laughs> Open mouthed. <laughs> um, the film was nominated for five Golden Raspberries, losing all mm. but one of them to Hillary's America. Oh. Uh, the other one was worst screen combo, and they, which it lost to Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Trousers. <laughs> That's interesting. I yeah. disagree with you there, Razzies. <laughs> Why have you seen 
Well, yeah, on this one, yeah. Well, yeah. the worst screen combo was for any combination of God and Mortal, which it said was worse than Bats v. Soups. No, not mm. as bad as Bats not v. Soups. Not as bad, yeah. Was, yeah, which yeah. is what I disagree with, I think. <laughs> Fine. It's a, it's a tough one, because at least Mortals and Humans said more than five things to each other in this one. Yeah. But in but the, the other one, shit. Batman, they have the same mother's name. <laughs> So. Oh man! Yeah, I know. Oh, I get it now. Yeah, you see, it's deep, Christ. It's layered. T- Fuck yeah, it's amazing. Uh, the film has fifteen percent on Rotten Tomatoes, twenty-five percent on Metacritic, and barely broke even with its production budget. Yeah. And so, with marketing and other costs, probably lost the studio as much as ninety million dollars. Oops. Now, there are no three men to report, but I can announce that on this very auspicious occasion we mark the fourth appearance at the very least in ogt history of the lucky country the wide brown land god's own australia yay (laughs) hey that's why we're here this is why we do this it's hard to get a definitive list of films shot in australia but at the very least kangaroo jack ghost rider attack of the clones and gods of egypt were shot in straya vision i said a hit Hop, the hippie, the hippie to the hip, hip hop, and you don't stop the rock, do the bang bang, pull him set up, jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie. This is the great. Yeah, it's great. You really feel that. <laughs> what a legacy. Yeah, they really captured the unique light. 90% in unconvincing CGI. <laughs> <laughs> I assume Australia is also 90% unconvincing CGI. Pretty much. I've not been. <laughs> the other 10% is just things randomly bursting into flames under the, the harsh, <laughs> corrosive sun. <laughs> If I had a webcam, you'd be able to see that I'm a very unconvincing version of a human being. So. <laughs> Made entirely of metal. <laughs> and I'm never not on fire. That's why they let me in. <laughs> we like the cut of your jib, son. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, also, we'll make, make, we'll make mention of it here. Whitewashing. White, white, white. Not an Egyptian in it. Mm. Not in the entire cast. You think you'd get? You think you'd get one by accident? Like just a bit of a <laughs> Egyptian, just any sampling. But nope, it's just uh, Australians and whatever Gerard Butler is now. <laughs> oh, and there's a Chadwick Boseman in there as well. So. Oh yes, yeah. he's not Australian or Gerard Butler. So <laughs> yeah, you got him. That. <laughs> you got that, and you've got Electra from the Daredevil. Elodie right. Young, yes. Yeah. There's not even anyone who looks remotely Egyptian. There's not even someone they hired mistaking. <laughs> mistakenly believing that they're Egyptian. Hang on a minute. Uh, oh, you're not Egyptian. No, I'm from uh, the Dominican Republic. Oh, I always do that. <laughs> the Dominican Republic of Australia. So many <laughs> of the cast are Australian. It was really weird looking through. I know. <laughs> uh, I, I think the most jarring of that is Brian Brown as King of the Gods. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he the one right right at Brian the beginning Brown. he gets killed? Yeah. Brian Brown. I love Jeffrey Rush as the big fan Ra, of Jeffrey Rush. Space Rush's King. Ra. Mighty Ra! I, I think his bald head wig is the best actor in the film. Oh, God. Daniel, you've mentioned it a few times before, but why have you brought us this offering in the hopes that it gets you into the afterlife? Spoiler alert, it won't. Oh. Well, I give up then. I'm going to hang up. It is a film where one man's vision is mm. wrong. <laughs> And every decision that is made, however impossible this may seem, it's the wrong one. Mm. <laughs> like, he doesn't even stumble across a good idea. <laughs> a good idea looked at, you know, Alex Breyers looked at a good idea, then looked at, hey, why not have gods as weird transformers? Mm. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yes, it's it's an odd one, isn't it? It's like, how can we adapt this? I don't know, like, did they look at what's in the public domain and egyptian mythology was just on like a list beneath robin hood and they were like well how can we make this more 2016 and it was robots yeah giants and robots (laughs) with lego god parts that can be slotted into other gods (laughs) oh yeah that was so weird they were like charm bracelets the gods (laughs) (laughs) let's get into it let's find out what happens in the gods of egypt does anything happen (laughs) So much, um, at least at least well, two actually, hours and yeah, seven minutes. <laughs> yeah, my God. We start with some narration from Scar from the Lion King. If you know the whole story, from what I recall, it goes something like this. Yes, turns out to be a wa- a young lad named Beck. Yeah, Beck. 
Beck. Musical yeah. revolutionary Beck? That's the one. It's Orlando Bloom in disguise. <laughs> well, he played Orlando Bloom's son in yes, uh, he did. Pirates of the Caribbean. Fucking hell. That one Whichever the fuck. <laughs> yeah, he's here doing an accent. And boy, he's doing it all right. Everybody's doing that accent. That weird, not quite a thing accent. The way exactly is your grandfather. You don't belong in battle. A token from someone with much. I thought you were a stray baboon. Normally when a bird lands on my boat, I kill it before it can shit. Well, this to me is bad period drama accent. And that they <laughs> hire people who just can't do RP. Look, Gerard Butler is it's Scottish Egyptian. <laughs> There's no... Such a big day for the family. You must be proud. Look at you, nephew. Magnificent. At least someone here will make a fine king. Well, it is not a well, thing. Well, look, Beck... No, he's just Gerard Butlering up yeah. the place. Like, he's not even acting. Thank you for the opportunity from the gods <laughs> of Egypt. But Gerard Butler doesn't even sound Scottish anymore. He just sounds like Gerard Butler. He sounds like a There's beard. No... Yeah. yeah, it's the beard, isn't it? It's, it's the bearded accent. <laughs> Fucking hell. But he is a muscular oh, beard. God, yeah. Like that's that's his acting <laughs> style. There are some actors who use their eyes, there are some actors who use their lips and eyebrows. <laughs> he just uses beard. Yeah. Even when he's beardless in films, he's still using <laughs> You just beard. feel it. Um so but like uh, uh, oh, oh fuck. This fucking okay. Where to start? So Beck. Oh, he's he's a lad. He's a bit of he's a bit yeah. of a sort, isn't he? And he's He's like Aladdin, basically. He's stealing and giving, but that rich, dre- oh. but expensive dresses to give to his girlfriend rather than food. Yes, they're probably fine. He's already food. got his jasmine. Um, yes, dating a girl. They're both excited because it's going to be the coronation soon. Coronation of what? I don't know. Gives a fuck. It's a big thing where all the gods are going to be, so they can have a dramatic showdown. They go, and the king of all gods is there, giving some great speech about how all of the people should continue to toil because they'll be rewarded in the afterlife. He promises. Hooray! Keep- Keep paradising, everyone. Uh, and the angel told Tom if he'd be a good boy, he'd have God for his father and never want joy. Sometimes I like to think about Blake when I'm watching Gods of Egypt. <laughs> Someone's got to. <laughs> and um, yeah, they, they go to the coronation of Horus, I'm going to yes, say. Yes, Jamie Lannister. Played by Jamie Lannister. And yes. he's <laughs> also doing a thing with his voice and face. And that's interesting yes, too. it is. Oh, and they're all big, by the way. They're about nine feet tall. It's very disturbing, kind of like those weird aliens that come in one of the Bill, Bill and Ted movies. The all <laughs> fleshy, hairy things. Very unsettling. I found that deeply disturbing. I don't know about yeah. you and the listeners at home. Well, speaking of which, Lannister blows unimpressively into a very small horn. And everybody loves it. He gives birth to <laughs> punk music. <laughs> punk jazz. But then, oh no! Yeah, at this stage, Gerard Butler arrives. Uh... Well, Gerard Butler gives the very small horn. Oh, is he he gives the horn to Jamie Bringer Lannister and he blows that impressive bringer of horn. Well, that's how I know him. <laughs> yeah, and at this stage, um, a bunch of soldiers spend a comically long time marching towards the stage. I think that is probably the only good shot in the Ooh. film. The crowd parting with the soldiers marching. Yeah, it's through. pretty dramatic. It goes on for about seven minutes too long. <laughs> but it's, Agreed, it's but a good bit of imagery. It's seven minutes long. Literally can't have too much of a good thing. The, the, the thing is, Gerard Butler, he stabs up uh, Brian Brown. King, <laughs> King of the Brian gods. Brown. The gods have a, a proper Scottish Christmas day. <laughs> Fight me. Father, don't. Stay out of this, son. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they both turn into robots and fight even louder than they were fighting <laughs> Such before. Such a thing could, could ever happen. Yeah, fight even louder and break things. They do. They break so many things, including people and folk who run away, all scared of the gods now. And I don't remember their names. Jamie Lannister gets his eyes mm. pulled out by Gerard Butler. Horace and Set. That's the one. Set banishes yep. Horace to... His father's tomb? A t- oh, he's got a hang tomb. Out. And tomb. Yeah. And then Beck and what's her name? Just go back to... Well, she becomes... Somehow, civilization just gets way worse. And she now has to do a PA job for a really... For Rufus Sewell. Dick. Of, of all people. It's awful. He fucking chastises her for leaving a, a shutter open and creating a draft yeah. in a room uh, <laughs> with no <laughs> with walls. two walls. 
Yeah. Close this window. That's beautiful. He says, walking around the window. <laughs> you can see what kind of jobs we're dealing with. So Beck <laughs> says, hey, look, I'm, I'm sick of you working in Egyptian Aldi for this jumped up assistant manager. Come and steal <laughs> the eyes of the gods with me. We'll bring, we'll bring Horace back to life and we'll d- properly do one on set. And uh, she's like, yeah, right. No, no issues there. Can't see why not. Draconian workplace. We should point out, just in case we remember to bring it up later, that the Dick Boss is actually the master builder of Egypt, who builds all the things in Egypt. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so he's, he's built the, um, what is it, Burj Khalifa. Yeah. And a Jenga pyramid <laughs> that's on fire. Yeah, which Butler is angry about because it's not quite as tall as Kevin Spacey's cat tower that he's building in the next town. Or on fire enough. <laughs> So Beck goes off to to get the eye of the gods. Yeah, and jumps around all the traps that are set in the pyramid. Yeah, it's fucking, very exciting. He loudly and obviously sneaks into the temple, and then loudly and obviously gets past the traps there. Yeah, did he get through all of them, Paul? The olive fell off of my pizza, and I was looking for it. <laughs> no, he died. Oh no! But then a very similar character comes along and um, just <laughs> steps over him. Another one of Orlando get, Bloom's children. He gets some guy, he's so bland that you see some guy going through the f- traps and you think it's him. Then he gets to the end and then gets his head cut off and Orlando Bland just shows up and says, oh, glad that wasn't me. <laughs> Yoink. So he gets the eyes. <laughs> he gets an eye because uh, the other one's yeah. up up your butt. And, um, <laughs> oh, what are you doing up there? I know. They, 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 you asked for it, mate. Don't pretend like you didn't <laughs> on air in front of the listeners at home and Daniel, our new boss. <laughs> Um, Fine. So yeah. it's a it's a it's a pool it's a pool thing. So we'll, we'll explain later. But um, yeah, he goes back to his girlfriend Jasmine and Rufus Seals there. He's like, I'm not a fucking idiot, mate. You, you took my map. You took the map that I have, <laughs> the one map that I use, and it's it went, and it was you because I saw it. They ride they, off, and then they escape. But then Jasmine gets an arrow in the Jasmine. Yeah, he manages to shoot her. They then, in order to try and get her back, he rides her body over to Jamie Lannister. And Jamie Lannister's like, um, well, do you have both of my eyes? After a tuffle. Um, I have one of your eyes. Uh, I guess I can see again. That's pretty good. Where's my other eye, though? <laughs> do you know how hard it was for me to find that one? Was it hard? No, not really. <laughs> no, some other guy did it. I had to do some <laughs> jumping, and, like, there it was took it uh, me out. weird unconvincing crocodile bridge and then some spinning guys. Yeah, I mean, I was out of breath. But apart from that, it was okay. And if I fell, I'd just fall into a nice, comfortable cushion of gold. (laughs) Like Scrooge McDuck. (laughs) What's good for ducks? Um, Plus, it was all in slow motion anyway, so, you know, it's it's easy. I I do normal motion. Back at the fucking temple, just briefly, Joe Butler's saying something like, I thought you said that no mortal could get into this tomb. It took him like 10 minutes. <laughs> but it wasn't that bad. Like, you know what would have been more effective than all that trap bullshit? A wall with a key you can't get in without. Yeah. Uh, some gods. Yeah. How about a nine foot, like, wall that the gods could just step over and the mortals would be like, nah, nah. <laughs> or just put another god there. There, there are, like, lesser <laughs> gods, aren't there? Just put There's one there. Quite a few of them. Like, just have one there for a while. Yeah. One of the goat dudes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Beck creeps up and they go, what are you doing? Just like, one oh, of shit, never mind. <laughs> I lost, lost my sandwich. So, yeah, it's pretty good, actually. Jamie Lannister's um, Horace set, jet, strikes a deal with the mortal, or the other way around, so that in order to bring his dead girlfriend back to life, he has to help this god to get his other eye back and overthrow Set and get revenge for killing his dad, brother. Whatever. Um, one of them. All of them. Dead. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> Hold on, before he does that, he does try to bring her back to life, which basically consists of, Oi! Don't be dead! No, it didn't <laughs> Come work. On. Sorry, got nothing. Stay with the living. Stay with the living. Stay with the living. She's gone beyond where I can reach her. Wake up, you silly bitch! No, it didn't <laughs> work. It's actually hard, this. Um, no, I'm so gonna she, need God's help after all. But it her, doesn't matter because Beck fucking loves the god. He fucking <laughs> loves the gods. They're the fucking best. Oh, he's got a big poster of them on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> the gods. gods. Yeah. With a Z. His girlfriend's um, on her way to the afterlife, so he's got to try and do all of this before she gets there. Mm, and he does. And <laughs> he does. It's, 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 it's actually quite easy. They go to meet Ra, who's Jeffrey Rush. King mm. Jeffrey Rush, whose job is to ride a boat into a cosmic evil darkness once a day. <laughs> yeah, he he built that station with the uh, defamation money that he got back from <laughs> News of the World or whoever it was. 
<laughs> to build a massive space yacht. Jeffrey Rush f- fights off the enor- enormous evil space worm. Apophis. Yeah, Apophis. Whilst Jamie Lannister fills his flask with space juice. This is an <laughs> odd film. Uh, there is something you are missing. Oh? In this scene, and it's very important. Uh-huh. Flat Earth confirmed. Oh, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were yeah. wrong all this time. The facts are there now. <laughs> Finally. Jeffrey Rush has t- shown us the way. <laughs> As we knew he would. The rumours, the conspiracy, if you ask me, probably perpetrated by Big Pharma, there's actually more to the world than just the land immediately around Egypt, proven to be false. <laughs> Australia, not even real. There's only Egypt. Never was. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's all CGI. We're not talking right now. <laughs> We're talking from Egypt. I'm in the north bit of Egypt, and you guys are in the south bit of Egypt. No, I'm just a CGI creation. <laughs> oh, we did establish this. I told you that of before. Of course. Designed to trick the world into thinking there's more than just Egypt. <laughs> but really badly composited into the scene, so everything looks strangely <laughs> flat with a projection of it. And there's perspective. Oh shit, are we in Scottish Egypt? Is that why there are no <laughs> Egy- Egyptian looking people in this? Different bit of Egypt. <laughs> They kill a whole bunch of gods, at which point, what's his name, Gerard Butler, he's going to send out, I should probably be more specific than just, they kill a bunch of gods, that's quite broad. There's a bunch of weird demon things that Jamie Lannister's able to kill, and um, Gerard Butler then sets out his hunters, at which point I write the note, fuck me, another actor from Fury Road? Because yeah. that's creepy Australian chick, isn't it? <laughs> the camera's that's, never that's on name, her, yeah. <laughs> the camera's never on her for long enough for me to actually confirm it's her, but it's the, it's um, the creepy one. What's her name? <laughs> Abby Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Model? Abby Lee? Both of them are Australian models, yeah. both the hunters. <laughs> Excellent. Courtney Eaton, who played Zaya, or, yeah, Princess Jasmine. Oh, right. She was, an, uh, she was uh, Cheeto the Fragile in... Uh, yes. She was another wife. Oh, right. In Fury Road, yeah. Oh, my God. So, how many of the wives yeah. has he got? Oh, no, it's two. That's right. That's the other one I counted. So he's got two wives. Chadwick Boseman's in this film? Oh, yeah. Event- well, they kill the two snake things and the two huntresses, I think. And there's lots of quippy comedy. It's great. Yeah, and there's an action one-liner that Jamie Lannister gives before he jumps into a hole with, um, what's her name? Courtney? No, not Courtney. God damn it. Elodie Young. <laughs> Half or <four>. Electra. <laughs> she shows up. They're together now. And Jamie Lannister's zinger is, Your company was preferable. Oh, ouch! Fourth, I'll have what he's having, and they jump into a hole. <laughs> Woof, am I right? Um, I, yeah, there was the run faster, I can't. Run faster, <laughs> that was good. I can't. Love it. Uh, exchange before, which is the height <laughs> of comedy. Run faster, I can't. Run faster, I can't. It's amazing. <laughs> I can't even was, comprehend it. <laughs> hey, do you know what? Uh, so that's... good. Probably my favourite joke in the entire film. <laughs> That's not a defence of it. But it is my favourite joke in the entire film. It's not, it's not maybe not as good as... Well, um, it, is the it is the joke, joke, to be fair. Yeah, it is the best <laughs> and worst of all of us. This is, this is preceded well, by... Then I guess we should run. Run? Mortals do it all the time. What is my accent? Where am I from? <laughs> Where am I from? Maybe Hayden Christensen can shine some light on this. <laughs> but um, now that they've got the god of love with them, they can somehow communicate with what's her name in the afterlife. Yes, because so... love, it's love all along. Love, love is the reason. Love is like Vodafone. So <laughs> they connect up. Blind. And he says to her, "Hey, it's me. I'm help- I'm trying to get you out of the underworld." And she's like, "Oh, I can't believe it. Yeah, I can hardly believe it myself. Me trusting a god. Oh, I mean, I'm probably meant more just communicating with you from the afterlife." <laughs> no, but you need to know about the things that have been going on with me recently. So out of character. Yeah. Am I just stay here? <laughs> Enough talking about me. What do you think of me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a whole thing with the Riddle of the Sphinx. They meet with um, Black Panther. F- f- sol- eventually solves the Riddle of the Sphinx, uh, which isn't the Riddle of the Sphinx. It's something else. And they get... What do they get for doing that? They get, uh, they get to go past. Oh, they get to access to the... Heart of the desert, so that they can pour the space juice into the fucking fire of the desert. <laughs> this film is so weird. Meanwhile, in um, hell, a poor old lady gets disintegrated because she's poor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, and we should mention that Osiris, uh, before Set killed him, allowed basically anyone to get into the afterlife. Okay. They didn't have to buy their way in, but Set changed the rules so you have to <laughs> have great riches to get into the afterlife. Otherwise, you just turn to. 
sand and disappear into a cloud. You get thanos except painfully. Yeah. And that happened to that poor old woman. Yeah. I, I was hoping that she might also have been a racist in real life and they could tell that somehow. Well, tr- well you know, just something. she was a white woman playing an Egyptian in uh, this oh, film. She so. insisted on it, actually. They were like, oh, we've only got this one <laughs> role left and this one was meant for the Egyptian. And she went, I fucking hate Egyptians. <laughs> she was a little old East Ender. <laughs> <laughs> Don't me worry about them. I'll fuck them up if they try and raise anything. Now give me this roll to me. I brought me shooter. <laughs> <laughs> she was Michael Caine as well. <laughs> oh god. So fuck her. Somehow this is kind of like a fever dream. Gemma Butler like kills a bunch of gods and takes all their bits off them in quick succession. He, he, earlier on, he killed a, an ex-wife of his. Um. Oh, who was it? Me- Memphis. Uh, Nephthys. Took her wings. Then he, he pulls out Black Panther's brain. Which has a little plug on it, if you uh, actually notice. <laughs> it has a USB. <laughs> it's like an external brain. <laughs> we get somebody's heart. Is that what's her name? That's Osiris's heart. Uh, and okay. then... So that's Brian Brown's heart. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Brian, Brian Brown's brown heart. It's just full of fucking cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> can't, oh. you, you can't walk past a sizzle, though, mate. Nah. Lovely hot day. Nice hot sausage. Fucking democracy sausage. <laughs> Has he got any other god bits? I mean, that's it. <laughs> um, and he's got the, weird... the juice of the space. And, yeah, so uh, he's got Nephthys's, uh Wit. Wings. He's got <laughs> uh, dust brain. Courage. Osiris's heart. And Horus's eye. Oh, that's and it. Yes, of course. And then go and see the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> <laughs> They all get installed into him by a singing group of tech guys. Set. Receive the golden wings of Memphis. May they protect him from those who would harm. <laughs> what was charm what they said? Where they just plug the bits yeah. into bits that he already has, <laughs> yeah. like, receptacles for these. Things. Oh, it's like the gauntlet mm. of Thanos. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, though, because it's a uh, glove <laughs> it was made, made for, for the that. purpose Whereas his head splits open so a brain can be put in. He's got plugs yeah. on his back so wings can be put in. A god's modular? <laughs> I guess so. They slot in. It's fully expandable gods. He uses his new magical add-ons to fly into space and kill Jeffrey Rush. And um, it's so during the big evil space worm starts attacking Egypt. And hell at the same time. Uh, There's a big old fight, right? On top of... Um, because Jamie Lannister's back. He's uh, newly yeah. inspired. And he's discovered that he can... No, not yet. He goes up there. They're in he's... Jason Schwartzman's club in um, <laughs> Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. <laughs> he goes up... Yeah, fight go... on top of the pyramid. They do. They go fight there. At, one, at some stage, the little human bloke... What's his name? Uh, Beck. Talented musician Beck. He stands aloft the pyramid as bait. And it's like, hey, come get me! And... Jerry Butler flies at him, killing him outright. I mean, that would definitely murder a human being. A yeah. giant god just flies at him and hits him. Yeah. But don't worry about it too much. Because <laughs> we've still got about seven hours to go in, in this movie. So what's going to happen? Um, <laughs> Jamie Lannister beats Set. <laughs> yeah, because he, like, he's not a better fighter. He's not stronger. But somehow he just pulls all the modular parts off. Offset. And then... Drops him on his head. Well, Jamie Lannister figures out that his journey isn't revenge. It's about protection, which he's going to get by getting revenge. By getting (laughs) revenge. At all costs. The best form of protection is murdering people. Because they can't (laughs) hurt you when they're dead. It's foolproof. Preempt a strike. Unchecked aggression. And then Jamie Lannister finally learns his lesson to protect the humans. Um, and that all brings... happens within 10 minutes oh, well, And then he brings Beck and then yeah. Jasmine back actually No, Ra did that Because Ra has the power <laughs> to do that oh, Because oh, gods are uh, not only modular <laughs> you know, They are rechargeable <laughs> Yeah, just basically everyone you... who has died so far comes back to life Except for Brian Brown He's dead <laughs> He's, He's replaced by Brian dead. Blessed He's dead <laughs> Because He's been dead for too yeah. long. So like, well, he made it to the afterlife. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Dear. It's yeah. Like Loki. He got. He was that old woman. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Gods of Egypt. Yeah, so nice. everyone, what did we think of Gods of Egypt? <sighs> Good. <laughs> I I I really have. I I love it though because it is just so nonsense. It, it's <laughs> a film that is. 
the the only kind of script writing direction is and then. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's yeah, it's definitely this a happens, yes and kind and of. And then this happens, and then <laughs> yeah. this happens. Yeah. Nothing leads yeah. to anything else. No, it's all very inexplicable and modular in that way. It's um, it is very odd. It's just episodes that they wrote and then assembled into an order of some sorts. Yeah, that makes no sense, and they skip over any of the major kind of character arcs so you know the betrayal arc lasts 10 minutes maybe yes (laughs) if that the um the hathor um uh horus betrayal arc lasts maybe five minutes yep Mm. nobody gives a shit about anything that happens but (laughs) because and then Mm. giant snakes attack and then there's a goat man and then we're doing this. Yeah, the number of times yeah. I just thought, "What the fuck is happening now?" <laughs> and why? I mean, I, I've I've got to say, I hate this film. Oh my god, <laughs> I fucking loathe this. This is one of the worst films I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. I refuse to believe that, sir. I know the no. I need to seen. watch some really terrible films. <laughs> no, you, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> argument. This, this didn't have anything, and it wasn't even inf- infuriatingly bad. It's infuriating now, but it was not at the time that I was watching it. it was just, everything was so dull. The CGI was awful oh, it and is. blurry in places. The dialogue was the worst yeah. dialogue. Dialogue was bad. Oh Accents were bad. God. Okay, uh, something I, I just with the CGI, something I want to point out, and mm. uh, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Mm. When the elephants are dragging the treasure carts into... <laughs> sets treasure vault room God, that Bex so hiding in. Uh-huh. Two of the elephants have exactly the same animations. Uh-huh. Oh my god! Um, about <laughs> half a second out of sync with each other. Oh holy shit! I want to go back and see nice. that. <laughs> oh no, that's amazing. It's that racist old woman from the <laughs> from the earlier scene. She was in charge of it. <laughs> yeah, and, and CG. <laughs> she thought this would further her cause somehow. So no one will fucking notice, and if they do, we'll blame it on Egyptians. Fucking hate them. <laughs> Don't know if I said that. <laughs> Key- She's also the casting uh, director. Key points of my presentation. I I've got to <laughs> say I fall in the middle here. Part of it, I think, has to come down to the circumstances in which I watched it, which you cannot divorce from the actual experience of the film, unfortunately. And sure, I woke up early this morning by mistake, and my body's <laughs> slowly adjusting to a more vigorous work schedule. So I had extra time, it felt like. I spent that time watching this. First thing in the morning, lots on in the rest of the day. And I can imagine if I was watching this, like, as I got home from work, my precious evening slowly being eaten up, minute by minute. (laughs) The next working morning looming large on the horizon. I would be quite pissed off with it. But I don't know, it's just... I I liked... You know what? It's one of the arguments that you always hear for the prequel trilogy. I liked the production design. But with the prequel trilogy... It's so soulless, the CGI. The CGI in this, bad and unconvincing, but at least had some texture to it. At least often felt like, mm. I don't know, there was something to it that allowed me to think, that allowed me to think, yes, that's a, an interesting location that they're in. And you'd have these interestingly designed in like visions of the afterlife and the underworld and these vast vistas. I don't know, it just, you know, very video gamey, of course, but... At the very least, it was an attractive location to look at. It was quite high spirited. It wasn't cynical, and it was just, yeah, enough to keep me taken uh, along. Yeah, I. But I, yeah, that's one thing I do like about it is that it's mm. not at all cynical. It's trying to be, you know, a, a throwback earlier age adventure film where. Yes, yeah, so there's a Clash of the Titans feel to the whole thing. Well, uh, original Clash of the Titans, not the yes. horrible. <laughs> far, no, far, Thompson. far worse than this fashion. <laughs> now that's interesting. That'd be a good point of comparison. Yeah, I've I've got to disagree on on this. Mm. I don't I don't think it lent the film any texture at all. I just found it so hard to to get a sense of the place because everything mm. felt so two dimensional and just fake CGI. And it whether you're looking at characters who are supposedly flying through the air and they're clearly just moving in front of a, yeah. a green screen, um, an isolated shot of Beck going, whoa! Or, um, you know, just the, the aesthetic of the thing. It was either too messy or too... Like, I mean, I 
described it to you over whatsapp as looking like baby sick <laughs> and um it just everything was really displeasing to me and um you know when we i got home uh i was watching it on wednesday night i think or thursday night i i took a shower i ordered pizza i had a real relaxing i was looking forward to watching a big dumb movie mm. and i was like this is going to be cool because i actually don't have the mental power to carry on watching when they see us so this is going to be great and mm. just scene by scene of, of wondering what's happening now why is this happening um <laughs> And why that's an interesting directorial or editing decision or <laughs> acting or whatever. It's just my, my goodwill drained and drained and drained until I was just empty and brain dead. <laughs> and for all the, yes, it wasn't cynical and it was trying to be a rollicking adventure movie. It hinges on a few things like the characters being likable and the jokes working and the action scenes being engaging and just on every, every single step, they fucking fell on their face. <laughs> You know and, what? I'm and... going to put a production still from behind the scenes of the film into the chat, which I think might change your mind as to the actual production quality of it. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward Bring to this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see? Paul. Practical. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who can't see, which is all but two of us, really. It's just oh, a guy, it's a oh. bearded man, and everything aside from his beard is blue screen. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's not a convincing world, but it's one that I was relatively interested in seeing how, like, what location's coming up next, what kind of crazy batshit thing is coming up for us now. What are we going to see? Mm. I mean, once you've had Jeffrey Rush and his fucking space yacht, you're at the very least somewhat interested in what other crazy visions this film can afford you, even if they're not going to look very good. Well, bizarrely, Jeffrey Rush and his space yacht firing space lasers at <laughs> Apophis yeah. is one of the more Egyptian mythology things. Ra mm. dragged the sun across the earth on his sky uh -huh. chariot. Whereas the other gods are just like, I'm a thing. I do, I, 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 I do god stuff. <laughs> yeah, I do like that for some reason, the sensors, and I've always noticed this, if you make whatever the thing is not have red blood, you can do what you like. Like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh, the Urukai have black blood. Okay, cut the arms off, cut the heads off, you know, stab them through, whatever. In this, gods have gold blood, and so you can get pretty mm. gory with it. There's some throat cuts and people getting bifurcated. and Yeah, there's a bifurcation, a couple of decapitations. A couple of disembowelments, it's eyes getting pulled out and you actually see like the mm. gold filled sockets it's pretty pretty full on but again it's big cgi monsters so your mileage may vary <laughs> i don't know it's i feel worst, like yeah. it seems like because i've previously played this position that goodman's in of being the one really bothered by the cgi quite often in fact so it's interesting to me that this can differ for me that sometimes it really bothers me and sometimes it's not quite so bad maybe it's because there's so much of it in this like, apart from the actors, yeah. pretty much every environment. And so it takes on that quality of being like Toy Story, where you, dis <laughs> you sort of just suspend hinting. your disbelief because everything is. Yeah. I, I guess, Maybe that's you it. know, if, if, if certain things work more for you or they don't make you as annoyed or you don't hate them as much, <laughs> you know, like for, for yeah. the, the blood splatter in Predator didn't bother me as much as it did you because I still oh, yeah, enjoyed I hated the, the violence that was happening around it. Um, yeah, that's true. So I got just, nothing out of that. And and yeah, so but that was violence perpetrated on real people with CGI blood. Yeah, this is CGI violence on CGI creatures, and so it's slightly less incongruous. Maybe that's it. Um, You're right, I forgot about the predator. I mean, I would definitely still call this incongruous because there are real people in there, and it's it's yeah, just no, I mean, are there impossible? Just the are there really? <laughs> well, you've got you've got to ask Gerard Butler that. <laughs> yeah. Is Gerard Butler a real people? <laughs> he does all the heavy lifting. Yeah. People, things that people didn't want lifted. <laughs> put that back. Yeah, Gerard, Gerard, put it down. <laughs> well, look. Do you have? Shall we try and summate one line each before we quick fire? Oh, total misstep, <laughs> Daniel. Uh, a series of bad decisions. <laughs> Not a bad way to spend a Saturday morning. Let's quick fire. <laughs> quick fire. I'll start. The black stone statues in the intro I thought looked pretty, and whatever that style is of black stone that the Egyptians had, I like that. It has a nice, smooth texture to it. 
I have a thing of it somewhere and it feels nice. It's like what's well, stone. It's like slate, but more malleable. It's good. The opening music over the title credits mm. reminded me a little bit of The Mummy. And this Ooh. is still when I was feeling pretty positive about this movie and ready to like it. Cause I was thinking, Wait, which oh, mummy? Oh, the, the good one, the original Brendan oh, okay. Fraser. Um, <laughs> well, original, but yeah, the Brendan Fraser. The, it's the original Brendan Fraser. <laughs> well, anyway, it reminded, there was, it reminded me of the wonder that I felt when I was watching that Brendan Fraser mummy. And that was, that was nice. It's nice to be reminded of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I genuinely think a lot of the costuming is, is hmm. actually very good. There's some interesting stuff. Yeah. Like it's it's not period correct, but there God, are no. a lot yeah. of great costumes in it. Some of it is is clever plot wise. Some of it's just really nice work by yeah you know, actual artisans. True. Yeah, I'll give it that. It's it's yeah. bespoke. <laughs> oh, oh, it's very bespoke. Egyptian by a way of Paris catwalk and <laughs> someone's boudoir photography studio. love it sounds good when jamie lannister right at the beginning of the film falls backwards into a pool and mm. there are mortals around like small mortals i thought that looked great like the water splash looks like a giant person has fallen into that pool i don't know it's just a good size comparison like this is what it's like when a nine foot man jumps into a pool of water by you every so often I... the perspective stuff actually worked because they did do some of it with actual camera trickery like um you know, they kept mentioning Lord of the Rings. So. Yeah. I, I enjoyed, I think when he gets out of the pool or he wakes up, he stumbles groggily in, head first into a lion's head that's just hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> and that was, that was just a nice bit of impact and comedy reaction. I think I actually <laughs> let out a little <laughs> when it happened. So uh-huh. there you go. Later in the film, when uh, Gerard Butler gets out of bed with Hathor because Rupert Sewell has come to see him, there's just this beautiful, like, one second moment where you know, Hathor stands up, you know, stretches, you know, giant god cock waving in the breeze. And Rufus Yule just, yeah, he's looking forward, trying to be very honest, and then just looks down for a little bit and looks back up. And it cuts <laughs> back to Gerard Butler, who just gives his big grin. <laughs> like, I didn't notice this. Yeah, it, it's, it's a throwaway little moment, but it's very, very good. That's oh, good. Yeah. I think, my... and I'm pretty sure that's just because Jared Butler got out of bed naked and made Rufus <laughs> Sewell look at his dick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I think my moment concerns him too because it's it's the master builder, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He when he, um, Jared Butler is saying, "Couldn't you have made it taller?" Um, <laughs> the master builder says, "Well, that might be difficult um now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. That was I, good... I had that. That, that was, was a good, good delivered line. A good actually, delivered line. A good delivered line. Uh, actually, the perspective stuff going on in that scene was fun in a very rubbish way. It reminded me of the Dennis Waterman sketch in Little Britain. I mean, <laughs> hand, handing him tiny mugs and they're just bigger than his face. I fucking forgot about that. Fantastic. <laughs> I could be so good for Scottish plays. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was a sad show. In the fight between Jamie Lannister and Gerald Butler, a couple of Okay, bits. Yeah. Um, like uh, Nikolai Costa Waldo, or however you pronounce it, is yep. knocked Rash. back, and to stop his sort of trajectory, he just digs his spear, mm. the tip of his spear, into the ground to slow him down. Oh that yes, that did good. look good. I saw. Th- yeah, yeah, that was good. And then there's a bit of late later on where Gerard Butler is thrown at a pillar, and you just see the body hit the pillar, and <laughs> it's not a cutaway. It's a bit slow, but it still looks like a practical effect. Let the bodies hit the pillar. <laughs> Good stuff. By that song. <laughs> By Shaggy. Um, uh, another Rufus Shaw moment. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, when he and Beck are fighting on the lift to the top of the weird pillar, um, uh, Beck tries to stab him when, uh, you know, to get revenge because he's the one that killed Zaya. And the um, blade bounces off, mm. you know, what he thinks is armor, but Rufus Shaw rips open his shirt to reveal that he's wearing all oh, his yes. earthly treasures on him, <laughs> so he's yeah. always ready to die. Right. I thought that was a, a pretty nice one. And another great bit of, uh, like, costuming. Mm, cool, good stuff. I guess my next one... Oh, I really like when... I can't remember any of the characters' or actors' names. When the lady, who is um, <laughs> Horace's uh, paramour... 
Elodie Young Hathor. Excellent, Hathor. Okay, um, yes. She takes off that bracelet and immediately is snatched into hell. And I just love yes. the idea that hell is always just waiting for her to take that off. And the yes. second that she does, it's going to pounce on her. That was, that was good. I like that. And Gerard Butler's... <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. There's one my, my favorite bit actually is involving Chadwick Boseman and Jamie Lannister, uh. um, and it's slightly <laughs> ruined by the line that follows. But uh. Chadwick Boseman, when he's trying to Jamie Lannister's trying to convince him and all the very the replicas of him to help them solve the riddle of the Sphinx, um, he's musing on a lettuce and like right, taking notes. Oh yes, and and um, he keeps doing it, re- like returning to this the, the lettuce when Jamie Lannister's trying to get his attention. Yeah. And um, just as he's about to finish speaking on it, Jamie Lannister comes out of nowhere, grabs the fucking lettuce and just crushes it with a look of mad fury on his face. <laughs> and it's done with such perfect <laughs> comedic timing. It is amazing. But then it is ruined slightly by, it's a lettuce! No. Like, oh, you didn't... You could have just snatched it and then carried on with the conversation. It would have been way better, way more seamless. But it was a really good physical moment. Goodman, can you imagine for me my reaction to that scene considering the one difference in our experiences being that that was the first time I noticed there was a lettuce in the sea. (laughs) So they're just Um... fucking talking. (laughs) Suddenly, Jamie Lannister has a lettuce in his hand, which he crushes and says, it's a lettuce. (laughs) And I had no idea what the fuck was going on. (laughs) That would have been a better way of seeing that scene. It's a joke from later on in that scene, which I like, then I hate, then I like again, because it goes on way too long. (laughs) Uh, Beck basically plays on uh, Thoth's um, arrogance to Mm. get him to help them, you know, answer the riddle of the Sphinx, which he does wrong. Anyway, twice. Yeah, he basically tells him that uh, he'll tell the Sphinx that uh, Thoth was afraid that he'd get the answer wrong, which he does. Hmm. And Thoth says, do you think I'm so arrogant? And they look around to all of the clones of Thoth in the room. Hmm. And then all of the clones of Thoth, like, I like that little bit there. But then all the clones of Thoth look at each other. Right. And I hate it. <laughs> and then it keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of like it again because they're just... It's, you know, someone telling a joke and going, Get it? Get it? Get it? Get it? Yeah. Get it? <laughs> but then when they've been doing it Get for it? 20 minutes, it suddenly becomes funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the, it, Then it becomes about the different ways they say, Get it? <laughs> yeah. I also really like in that scene that um, in the scene where he actually solves the riddle of the Sphinx, he's like, there's a moment where he's like, that's a perfectly acceptable answer to that riddle. <laughs> and having experience of being a dungeon master in D&D, I'm very much related to the Sphinx's look of slight frustration when he realizes he's been given an answer that does actually meet his criteria, but isn't the one he was hoping for. <laughs> Fuck, do I take it or... No, rules it's rules, I've got to get him. <laughs> I, f- I would say there were some bits of the snake fight I liked. First of all, that did look like it was a set that they built. I mean, they just dug trenches. Um, it happened in a cemetery. And it was an interesting environment. There's specifically a bit where the snake goes to bite Jamie Lannister and he's in one of the like pits. And it blows fire, which moves around the coffin and he's able to get on the other side. And it was just I don't know, a little bit neat. And I like the way it ends by... Uh, Hafor showing up and convincing the snake to burn itself to death. That was grim. Oh, yeah. I like that. Even oh, if it was bad CGI, that. it was a depressing death for the snake. <laughs> and it, it's pretty much the only time in the film where the CGI is quite good. The snakes looked alright, I think. They had like a crustiness yeah. to them. They looked like they had a weird hard outer skin layer that needed tre- uh, shedding. I Yeah, I was convinced once, once the snake started setting light to itself. <laughs> That looked, that looked pretty good. <laughs> that was wish fulfillment. For me, when Anubis and Beck disappear down to the land of the dead, mm. leaving Jamie Lannister on his knees and alone, yeah. that was an effective bit of symbolism there. Yeah. Depressing. Oh. <laughs> good stuff. And he just sets light to himself. <laughs> over and over again. I, I love it because of how awful it is. Jeffrey Rush's mm. outfit. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the horrible bald head wig, the weird top knot thing he has going on behind yeah his head looks like it's been had boiling oil poured over it or something or other because it's weird and scarred and then 
you know, when he's in God form, he's just himself with a bigger hat yeah. on the fire. <laughs> Yeah, he just becomes a larger Jeffrey Rush, but was still Jeffrey Rush face. It's quite, <laughs> it's quite excellent. Yeah, and a bigger hat. <laughs> yeah, it's that's He's it. Got a new yeah. hat. Everyone else turns into a weird robot transformer Lego thing, and he just turns into a bigger him. <laughs> excellent. All right. Well, I think that just about puts the sarcophagus on the gods of Egypt. That's not a thing. So let's talk about one better thing. Oh, uh, well, how about the OG team? How about the OG team? What have they got to say? God, I love hearing from them. It's my favourite part of every I... episode. <laughs> Never forget it. Come on, then. OG team. OG team. Brilliant. Yeah. God. Janelle hey. said, uh, this film is about as much fun as a drop pie, and that's being too kind, but I really like two of Proyas' films from the 90s, so I guess that's some <laughs> residual uh, positivity. Probably De Crow. Sorry? Probably De Crow. I didn't get De Crow. I didn't get it. The crow. Oh, okay. The crow. The crow. That and crow. That and Dark City. She's a fan of, yeah. fans of both of those. Gotta see that again. The proto matrix, as Alex Proyer likes to call <laughs> it. The 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 proto matrix. <laughs> nice. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, boss. <laughs> Aussie nerds. At Aussie nerds pod <laughs> said, "I saw this in gold class with a group of friends." So that memory is the one good thing. Is gold class a <laughs> cinema experience one can have when you're an Aussie nerd? It is, yes. Uh, one of the cinemas, I forget. Is that a palace? What is it now? Village. Oh, village. Village cinemas. Gold class. Boff. Nice. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. <laughs> that was it. OG team. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, OG team. One better thing. The one better thing. Well, it's tricky, but I'm going to have to go with the Guns of the Navarro and Lawrence of Arabia, The Man Who Would Be King, Raiders of the Lost Ark, or any one of Sergio Leone's excellent Western films. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Watch them all, folks. They are all seriously a really good bunch of films. You're not a god! You're all right, Slag! That's uh, <laughs> an Alexa from Man Who Sean Would Be Connery. King there. Yeah. <laughs> Got a bad accent. <laughs> um, <laughs> here, watch me do my uh, Sean Connery. Um, my name... <laughs> 007 No, I fucked that fuck, up. Fuck he's in the room. It's... Watch out women. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> I thought uh, a modern retelling of a famous uh legend or folklore. I'm going to go with The Kid Who Would Be King, uh, ah. which was came out this year in fact, directed by Joe Cornish of Attack the Block and The Adam and Joe Show. He had a role in Tintin as well and uh yeah, it's about a school schoolboy in the UK, in London, probably. He's the only one in London worthy to pull the sword from the stone. And he gathers a crew of, sort of teenage knights to go and, yeah, to go on a journey across England and defeat evil and become the protector of the realm, I'm going to say. But it's it's very good. Joe Cornish is a um, very innovative director. I think he proved that with Attack the Block, um, visually especially. Um, but he's got a real good eye for, for actors. That was one of John Boyega's earliest roles. Uh, the Kid Who Would yep. Be King is starring Andy Serkis' son. I forget the name. Ch- Charlie Serkis. Patrick Stewart is in this as old Merlin, but the young Merlin is also fantastic. He's just a real joy to watch. Um, yeah, it's just it's very, very good and just enjoyable, wholesome, and kind of em- emotional stuff going on there. Um, I would say anything by Stephen Summers from his, uh, you know, big adventure phase. Jungle Book, Deep Rising, The Mummy, The Mummy Returns, Van Helsing. Oh, Stephen Summers, not Barry Sonnen Cat. <laughs> I messed that up. Like, it, even his worst one, Van Helsing, mm. is, you know, it, it's a non-cynical, like, uh, I'd say that's the, the, the closest one to... Uh, this. Gods of Egypt yeah. in, uh, in style because it's taking a bunch of public domain shit, mashing it together in his own vision uh, mm. with unconvincing CGI and an and then plot structure. But it's fun. Okay. And mostly yeah, coherent. Fun. And it does have a giant <laughs> sad sky face, which uh, I <laughs> do love. Now, the tagline for Deep Rising is full scream ahead. Pretty good. And that's better than anything else I've ever read. So. <laughs> Yeah, better than Pinchin. I'm willing to go with that. Better than McCarthy. <laughs> um, is, is it better Fuck than em. the Clash of the Titans tagline, which was "Titans will clash"? <laughs> 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 
Da, God, that's da, shit. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here, the used. We don't need you. This film sells itself. We don't need more art. Fuck me. You know what? What was the tagline for Gods of Egypt? Egypt will gods. <laughs> yeah, something like that, I'm sure. I'm going to look that up. One of the worst ones I ever saw was for a movie called Stone Cold, which was an excellent film. Oh, the Brian Bosworth. Yes, yes, the Brian fucking Bosworth <laughs> film. It's fantastic. I love that With movie. Lance Henriksen as the yeah. head. Yep, fucking great movie. The tagline on the poster was Cold as Stone. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, taglines for Gods of Egypt. All of heaven is at war. All of creation is at stake. The journey of a lifetime begins. The battle for eternity begins. I like the idea of it being just one tagline squeezed into the bottom <laughs> half of the poster. The text getting smaller. It's a, it's a Rick and Morty style improvisation <laughs> on this poster. Well, what's so Let weird about this. that is that it goes against the actual plot of the film because the gods aren't in heaven. They are on earth. There is only one afterlife. Ah, uh, there you go. See, it and seems to be hellish. There. Yeah, no. no one's there. So, Gods of Egypt. gotta no, get you out there. together. Gods of Egypt, coldest stone. The one better thing. Uh, do we have any other segments, or <laughs> should we just? I think we, I think we can end out. Great, Daniel. How can people find out more about a lot of green? Uh, check out the website at www.alotofgreen.com.au. Um, and if you love the sonorous yet nasal tone of my voice. Yeah. You can check out 7 Out of 10, which is a video games podcast Ooh. I do. And I have a film podcast coming out soon called You'll Like It, I Promise. <laughs> nice. That sounds great. That's good. Okay, and Paul, how can people find out about The One Good Thing? You can do so on Twitter and Facebook at OGT Pod. Send us an email at gmail at OGTpod at gmail.com. We'll put the call out for the OG team on uh, the first two of those that I mentioned, the third one. I might do. Send me an email. Send you one back every week. I won't. But uh, we also do it on Instagram. Forever. So, yeah. Um, yeah, after the Inspector Gadget movie came out, I posted 10 seconds of beautiful, uh, quiet TV static just to, just as a lovely <laughs> palate cleanser. It's like a slice of ginger. Um, and, yeah, other than that, you can find us on the A Lot of Green Network. Yeah. Yeah, there's that. Do that. Do that. Australian yeah. podcast. Awesome. Yeah, do that. Cool. Good stuff. Go on. What's yep. stopping you? Nothing, that's what. I'm Paul Salt. I'm Paul Goodman. I am not a Paul. <laughs> I'm Paul. Oh, I'm Daniel Wilkes, yes. <laughs> and remember. I'm Paul Wilkes. <laughs> Paul Daniel Wilkes. And remember. That's a fucking good name. One good thing. The one good thing about gods of Egypt is the Egyptian gods. See? I can be as, I can be lazy too, tagline people. I was going to say that is that it's over. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. And it is now. End. <laughs> See, but like, uh, uh, oh.